Hi, I'm Lee, and this is NASA Now, using fission power to fuel space technology. And why is hydrogen the most effective fuel for rocket propulsion? That's ahead, but first, here's what's happening at NASA Now. <laughs> NASA scientists say it's one of the most ambitious science endeavors of our time. It's called ITER, International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor. The reactor is the core for the new fusion power plant being built in southern France. Its goal? To produce fusion energy. The experimental reactor is scheduled to be built in 2018. And we're just weeks away from the launch of Aquarius. Aquarius is a satellite mission that will measure global sea surface salinity. What's salinity? The amount or percentage of salt in water. The information will help NASA with climate studies and measurement in glacial changes. Hey, now let's take a look at the past. Nuclear fission was first discovered in Germany in 1938. Four years later, December 2, 1942, the first successful nuclear fission experiment took place at the University of Chicago inside the college stadium. NASA scientists are working on developing the next generation of nuclear propulsion systems and power systems. Here to fill us in on the latest research from Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, is aerospace engineer Mike Schoenfeld. Uh, fission power has actually been considered for use for uh, space technology since the early time of the discovery of uh, fission for, for nuclear power here on Earth. In fission, we have typically very large atoms which can be split either by another particle hitting them or then becoming unstable. And so when a very large atom splits, that releases energy. That energy can then manifest in the form of heat, which can then be transported and converted into electricity. Fusion, on the other hand, has to do with very small or light atoms. In that case, the very light atoms are fused or combined together, which also releases energy. We use nuclear for two aspects, for power and propulsion. We use the, the power for generating electricity to run equipment and support a habitat and run life support systems. And for propulsion, we would use it for a more effective, rapid way to explore and get to places in the solar system. All propulsion is essentially ex exerting a lot of mass out the back of a rocket engine through a nozzle. Chemical rockets get high temperature gas by doing combustion. A nuclear rocket on the other end does not get its high temperature from combustion, but from the nuclear reactions. We flow hydrogen over a nuclear reactor that then picks up the heat from the reactor and cools it in the process. And that then forms the high temperature gas that's ex exerted out the back. The way we simulate the heat from a nuclear reactor is with these electrical resistive elements that, that we've developed. And essentially it's kind of like a stovetop in your home where you run an electrical current through a heater to produce heat. During testing, we would use several of these fill pins to combine them together to simulate a very small scale nuclear core. And then we would integrate that core into our system that is used to produce power. So we would have a, a, say, a power generating loop that had our simulated core, a pump to transport the cooling media around that is used to transport the heat, and then some sort of power conversion device, like a Stirling engine, which would convert that heat into electricity. The reactors that we're considering for space are much smaller than you would expect from your typical terrestrial reactors here on Earth. There's something on the order or scale size of a very large trash can, rather than a very large two-story building like they are here on Earth. Utilizing nuclear power or nuclear for power and propulsion in space 
is a technology that would greatly enable our ability to explore space. We would have an abundant supply of power that's very insensitive or doesn't matter where it's located. This would greatly enable exploration because you would have a reliable source of power that could operate irregardless of solar intensity and so open up many locations for exploration. Hey, now it's time to check out what's up. Next time the sun is out, think about the naturally occurring nuclear fusion that's going on deep inside its core. The process of fusion in the sun is known as the proton-proton chain. The sun starts with hydrogen and through a series of steps turns it into helium. Since the total energy of helium is less than the energy of the protons from the hydrogen that went into it, this fusion releases huge amounts of energy. Now that's solar power. Teachers, you can have your students create their own high-powered paper rockets using the Rockets Educator Guide, found on the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Be sure to tune in next week when we learn about nanotechnology and future space exploration. We'll see you then on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.